Well, you've heard from me once before, and I just want to emphasize one thing. We very much regard this activity and engagement that we have with so many people who have served and are serving our nation in so many ways as a real learning experience in a two-way street. Um, and I speak for all the schools in, uh, around Harvard in talking about what a huge difference they make. I can speak most directly, of course, about the Kennedy School. I promise you someone at the school this year, if passed as any indication, will be a head of state somewhere. If that person has had any interaction with an important uh, any member of the U.S. military, they're going to have a very different view about cooperation, about values, about integrity, and about the possibilities uh, for negotiated or peaceful solutions, as well as the importance and the, and the capacity of the U.S. American military. So it is in that context that we are the ones that are privileged to have all of you here. And again, I thank you for your service, not only to the nation and to the world, but also to the hundreds and hundreds of other people who you will touch while you're briefly here at this university and how grateful we are for that. Now, my main role, however, in life here is to introduce terrific other people. And that's the role of the dean. And uh, so, uh, once again, I want to introduce another uh, exemplary individual who is uh, serving uh, and, uh, he, uh, ha and has served with great distinction. His name is Drew Sloan. He is a joint Kennedy School Business School uh, student and will graduate with an MPA and MBA in uh, 2010. After graduating from West Point in 2002, he was commissioned as an infantry officer in the United States Army and assigned to the 25th Infantry Division at uh, Schofield Bar Barracks in Hawaii. A tough deployment, but somebody had to do it. Uh, but there, he, from there, he went to Afghanistan uh, in support of Operation Enduring Freeman, Freedom and in Iraq to support Operation Iraqi Freedom. There he was critically wounded, uh, supporting the 2004 Afghan presidential election, and catch the significance and the irony of that combination, which is, to me, the best. He spent two months recuperating at Walter Reed, beginning a rehabilitation process that lasted a year, a year and a half, and involved dozen, at least a dozen surgical procedures. Never leaving active duty, Sloan returned to combat, uh, this time in Iraq, less than a month after his final surgery. And during his time in service, Sloan served as a rifle and anti-tank platoon leader with the 25th Infantry and as the aide-de-camp for the Deputy Commanding General of the 25th Infantry Division. Uh, he reserved, he's received both the Bronze Star as well as a Purple Heart. And in November of 2007, uh, Sloan separated from the Army as a captain. Uh, his service and his leadership, much like that of General Petraeus and so many others here, are an inspiration and equally important, a lesson to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, Drew Sloan. Uh, Dean Ella, thank you very much for that uh, very warm introduction. And uh, General Petraeus, Dean, um, Professor Gordon, everyone else, on behalf of the veterans, um, I would like to say thank you for being here. I would also like to thank Harvard University for allowing this event to take place. And I would like to give a personal thanks uh, on behalf of the veterans to the Center for Public Leadership and the staff there for all the, doing all the hard work to turn this event into a, a reality. So I've been asked to speak a little bit about what it's like to be a veteran at Harvard and also to briefly describe the organization that we've chosen to highlight here tonight. When people always ask me, what was it like to go from military life to Harvard life? Um, they're always a bit surprised when I say, there's really no easier transition than to go from the Army to Harvard Business School. <laughs> you show up, they give you a big name card, they say sit here, show up on time, raise your hand if you want to talk. It's, it's kind of like you never left the military. It's a comment that I think that I hear and imagine many of my fellow veterans here tonight hear all too often. And it's a comment we hear all too often, and it's one we, but it's one we don't challenge often enough. I think as veterans, we have an obligation to tell our fellow classmates there's really nothing different between them and us. Nothing makes, made us genetically different than them. We just made different choices. When we allow our classmates to sell themselves short, 
by copying out what I could never, we're really selling ourselves as veterans short. Because as veterans, as current or former servicemen and women, we're supposed to be leaders. And we all know that the best leaders draw out the hidden strengths and talents from those around them. When we allow our classmates to say, I could never, and we accept that, we're not doing that. My experience here at Harvard has shown me that many of our classmates look up to veterans as personal examples of leadership. And I feel it's a very important responsibility and one we should not take lightly. Now that said, as I said at the beginning, I'm also supposed to talk a little bit about the organization that we have chosen to honor tonight, the Fisher House Foundation. And I was chosen because I, like a few of my other servicemen out here, got a little banged up on one of my trips overseas. And the organization that we've chosen to, to highlight, the Fisher House, plays an important and often overlooked role in putting people like me back together. I don't think I'd tell you that, that being wounded is a terrible thing. And it's, in, in some ways it's easy to relate to, and in other ways it's a bit more difficult. One of the ways it's a bit more difficult is that being wounded is a, is a very lonely, lonely experience. In your hospital room, lying awake in the dark of night when everyone but the night nurse has left, you start to think about what happened, about what went wrong, what's now missing, how you're living a life that is completely different than the life you thought you were going to lead. You feel alone, you're alone in that room, and you feel alone in life. And in another room, not too far away, usually a hotel room, there are other people who are alone. These are the families of the wounded. They are the mothers and the fathers, the young brides or the young husbands, who in hearing upon of their loved one's injuries, drop everything to rush to be by their side. My mother was one of those people. Five years ago, my mother got a call that her only child had been very seriously wounded half the world away in Afghanistan. And she dropped everything. And four days later, she was there to greet my unconscious body when I arrived at Walter Reed, Medical, or Walter Reed Army Medical Center. I eventually regained consciousness. And, but even when I did, it was clear that I was in for a long hospital stay. And so she did what countless other military families do. She took up residence at the Army Hotel on the grounds of Walter Reed. And while we could comfort each other during the day, she would always have to go, usually at dinner time, usually around dinner time, back to the hotel at night. And it was there that she would cry, and it was there that she would cry alone. And it doesn't have to be that way. And thanks to the Fisher House, it's not for an increasing number of our wounded and their families. The reason we've chosen to honor the Fisher House is, the great, is because of the great work they do in providing an environment where you can heal as a member of a group and as part of a team. By constructing houses on the grounds of military and veterans hospitals around the country, the Fisher House Foundation seeks to provide a communal environment in which families can heal together. The standard Fisher House is simple. Everyone gets their own bedroom and bathroom, but the living room and the kitchen are communal, providing opportunities for interaction and to build friendships among the occupants. It's a place where my mom could have gone had gone back to have dinner, and she could have had it with somebody who was just as scared and as saddened as she was, instead of returning to a hotel room and having her dinner alone. Quite simply, the Fisher House provides a home instead of a hotel. As a veteran, it makes me, I'm humbled by the amazing efforts of organizations like the Fisher House Foundation and many other uh, organizations that support veterans. And as Professor, uh, Professor Gordy mentioned tonight, we're honored, I personally serve, to have Mr. Ken Fisher here. Um, and I really respect you know, the work that you've done and your organization that does to help people like me um, who've been wounded and to heal as a group. Please feel free to take the brochure that you'll find on your table back with you tonight. And I really encourage you to try and consider donating to what we feel is a very, very important organization. We hope you have a great time tonight. And Dinner is about to be served. Thank you very much. <laughs>